Uh, yes, this was a, a very interesting uh, perspective about how uh, localization should be part of uh, product uh, development uh, and uh, uh, product uh, planning uh, right from the start. Um, and uh, uh, it, uh, it made me think uh, what, what would be uh, for companies that are just planning to uh, build an app and then they want uh, to make it uh, global ready, uh, localization ready, uh, what would be some uh, biggest uh, challenges uh, they need uh, to so solve uh, process-wise uh, to then uh, easily integrate localization into their uh, marketing processes if we're talking about mobile marketing and uh, if we're talking from Alex's perspective what would be um, the, the uh, obstacles or challenges to solve or to integrate localization into the operational uh, processes of the companies what do you guys think about it um, uh, well uh, if uh, since I'm in localization <laughs> and there is a process and uh, there is a recommended process of creating uh, multilingual apps from day one. So if, you, if there is a chance, just 1% chance that you will be building uh, in the future the, uh, the multilingual app uh, or game, uh, the, the, my best advice is to start with two languages. One could be just fake, but when you start with two, you implement this logic of internationalization. You uh, think about currencies. You think about how will, uh, how they will pay. You think about how they will switch languages. How the fonts, uh, what fonts you uh, select to support hieroglyphs and and uh, just Latin. Uh, what that, that's that's very important. If you start just with two languages, I, I'm not I'm not talking even about the the right to left layouts for, for Hebrew or Arabic. That's that's uh, that's also. But if, when you start with two languages as a developer. Just uh, keeping that in mind just gives you the 50% of localization in the future. And when you started, uh, of course, uh, every, um, every software development environment just forces you to internationalize your apps. Uh, you cannot build uh, just an uh, app, uh, just hard coding the strings. Some, some people do this, of course, they do. But if they follow the guidelines of the just developers, they do not do this. So your string resources will be separated into different files, into separate files. You will have a repository on GitHub as a software developer. And the next uh, vital thing uh, for proper process is uh, choosing a platform for localization. So it's, uh, it's, no, it's like 15 years ago, it was sending files uh, to translators by email. Uh, now it's not uh, in this way, of course. Uh, and uh, for many years, uh, we've been having all, uh, already uh, super powerful localization platforms. The platform, uh, it just takes your uh, localizable resources from your repository and uh, the translator will come to, to this platform and they will do their job, they will translate. Uh, if properly managed, uh, then, then the platform will allow building glossary, which is very important, and a style guide. So all the translators will be referencing it. And also it will have translation memory. And whenever you have the repeating, just retranslating your app, you will not pay, uh, you will not retranslate it from scratch. And uh, what happens uh, that translating technically, so translating into one language or 20 languages, it, it, it just, it just doesn't, uh, it just works uh, as um, like a charm, uh, uh, whatever number of languages you have. Uh, your string resources are being translated and duplicated in your, right in your repository. So you, you just uh, receive a pull request to your GitHub. If, uh, so developers, they, they, they know what I'm talking about, I hope. So, um, and, uh, and you uh, can build every, like every hour, every night, you can build your lo localized apps. And then uh, the, the part of the process, of course, is uh, localization testing when the linguists they, that were previously translating your app, they can install and test your app in the environments. And that's a very uh, important um, step of the localization uh, pipeline. Uh, on the platform, you can use even AIs to translate and the proofread is uh, human linguist to proofread or even in, uh, in, in vice versa. So you can translate with linguists and proofread with AIs. So 
you build uh, any pipeline you want, and, and that's, uh, that's um, everything is automated. We, we call it continuous localization, and every update, uh, the developers, they just add new uh, strings, and they're translated, and that, that's like magic. N nobody, uh, nobody knows how it works, but only the project uh, localization project manager wants. And uh, this can be managed in-house. You can have your freelance translators paying them, testing them, entrusting them, but they disappear. <laughs> so uh, there are lots of setups. Um, one of them is to have just some vendor, like language services provider, like OpenNOST, and uh, they will do, 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 do the thing. Uh, 